What is going on, everyone? Welcome to yet another episode of the Shock Factor Podcast, where I, Stephen Shock, am stinky, smelly, and ugly. But Jake Mintz, no. Jordan Schusterman, beautiful, handsome, smell nice. They smell like the mall. Like the mall, but the section where when you walk through it, strangers spray you with stuff, completely disregarding whether or not you might want that and whether you might have allergies. But still smells good, still smells clean. That's what we're walking into. Guys, how are you doing this week? Uh, Steve, good morning. Uh, good morning is are the, the key words here, and I think a, an important place to start because what you just described, you always compliment how we look, not necessarily yeah. how we smell. Thankfully, that doesn't always come through. We are making Shock Factor history right now. This is the earliest we've ever recorded this podcast. I am visiting Jake Mintz in New York, but he's in the other room because we're professional podcasters and we know that this is the best way for this to, to work. Um, it is early on this Tuesday morning, and I am so happy to see you, Steve. Can I just say something, Steve, to you? I, I, I was expecting you, before I met you in person, to mm. be uglier and stinkier than you are. Just based upon your internet persona, I was expecting more of like a troll situation like a real brute. Yeah. But I think that there there is class to you. Um, you're certainly not like Ryan Reynolds or mm -hmm. Ryan Gosling yeah. or uh, you're not yeah, Ryan. Imagine. No, but mm -hmm. you you have things going for you and I would like it, it would be really it would mean a lot to me uh, if you could stop degrading yourself at the beginning of every podcast. That would be great. Anyway, college baseball. Yeah, college baseball. I like to set the bar low. Um, speaking of setting the bar low, that's not something I did this weekend in terms of college baseball. I went and actually saw it live, saw two pretty good teams between Texas and Florida or Texas A&M nope. and Florida. I was yep. going Florida A&M and Texas A&M in my brain. That's where we were going. Cause it's early. <laughs> I saw, again. I saw Florida A&M play Texas. That's a yeah, weird no, that's a that's a completely different matchup than what I saw, which was Florida taking on Texas A&M, and Wait, it was a Pop really quiz. good one. Yeah, Pop quiz, Steve. What does A and M stand for? A and M, agricultural, and um, um oh, and the engineering. M. Yeah, <laughs> agricultural, and uh, man, look at this. Man, that's a college. <laughs> Agriculture, agriculture and man, man. I'm out that agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, how was the how was the baseball? <laughs> it was good. It was really good. I mean, Condren <laughs> Family Park, super cool place. It's one of my favorite places to take in a baseball game. I watched Jace Laviolette um just absolutely will a home run over the fence. Like he had a pop-up that it could have gone to the third baseman, but I think he just believed hard enough that it was mm. going to end up being a home run, ended up like just nestling right next to the foul pole. Just one of the oddest home runs I've ever seen, but a home run nonetheless. That's why I think home runs are up this year. Guys, you're just believing in themselves more. It, it really is the belief. People will say the bats are better. People will say the balls are juiced. It's really yeah. just the heart, I think. Yeah, no, 10% uh, luck, 20% skill, 15% uh, the balls are golf balls. Um, I would say that – now, you were not there on Saturday, correct, Steve? I was um, there Saturday. That was Saturday. the game so we're, for, yep. uh, Or maybe it was Friday. Was that the game that Mr. Mr. Caglione hit two uh, balls over the fence? I believe that was yeah. Sunday. That was Sunday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, or it might have been Friday. I think it was Friday. Friday. I think it was the Friday. Yeah. Friday. Sure it was Friday. It was yeah. We're so it was good off. at this. Anyway, it, anyway, no, it ended Ryan Prager's twenty-four scoreless inning. That's yes. true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think we're. I think we are officially after this weekend. I believe we are done with um, qualified zero ERA havers. Yes. Uh, yeah. So sorry to Jamie Arnold and, and sorry to Ryan Prager. But anyway, um, this. So let's just stick on this series, and we'll go back to what you saw. But. but uh, Cags, the home run that he hit, the second home run that he hit, and we talked about one last week, or I think maybe the one that he hit against Florida State. He has, and we've had, we've been fortunate, even with the juice balls, all the crazy homers, even with you factor that in, we have had some power, raw power in college baseball 
that is is freaky. We'll talk about Dakota Jordan here at some point too. But the ball that Cags hit over the batter's eye, I am just I am I'm shook. I'm shook. That is, I think, the best way to phrase it in Gen Z terms. Okay, I don't know what is yeah. happening, and I'm very impressed. Um, but I don't know. You, you Jay Slavi, I mean, it's a lot of star power that you saw down there in, in Gainesville. Is that that's true, Steve? Yeah, tons. And it, it was a really good weekend. But one thing I do want to mention is like walking around the food options. I got a 14 inch hot dog or a 12 inch talk- hot dog for 14. Yeah, Jake. I wanted to talk to you about that actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, I live in New York, okay? Yes. Which culturally, in a lot of ways, is the opposite of Condren Family Ballpark, I think. However, I am quite experienced with overpriced food. Yes. You spent $14 on a hot dog. Mm-hmm. On a, was on a it, foot was long it worth chili it? dog. It was. Foot long because- chili dog. It was worth it. Okay. It was a very good dog. I think, honestly, too much chili. A little soggy in the middle. But you get to it quick enough, you're fine. You're cruising. So I, I think the biggest cruising. problem. Yeah, because like we're, we're talking that's a rate of $1.16 per inch a hot dog. You're getting cheese. You're getting chili. You're getting hot dog bun per inch. That's a good bite. That's a good, that's a good price. Where I am lost is a chicken tender basket was nineteen dollars. Just so, like so three Steve, tenders and fries. What I'm what so, is that? I'm so glad you said that because I agree with you that the price for a foot long hot dog sounds amazing. That that at a major league ballpark would be like thirty. So yeah. Yeah, but the but to your point though, the chicken tenders that sounds more like major league prices. Now I know there's a lot of future major leaguers on that on that field. I was gonna say country family a, ballpark. So yeah. in that sense, it it's makes a pro sense. program. It's a pro, it's a pro level program. It's a pro yeah. level facility, and yeah. it's got to be pro level prices. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the I, inconsistency there. I agree with you, Steve. That's a little strange. I don't know if it was pro level honey mustard. That's where they're losing me, but I, I'll never find out because nineteen dollars in exchange for three tenders, that's just something on principle. I, I'm not doing it. You know, it, it can be swung financially, but it's not gonna yeah. be because ethically. Did they let you into the ballpark without a family? Also, that was my other question is yeah, considering it's a yeah. family ballpark, you were able to go in without children? Yeah, I went in the Condren, just Condren guy, Condren estranged entrance. Um, it was only twelve. Condren bucks married with all no these kids. People. Yeah, oh. dual income, no kids entrance um, was pretty backed up. Went to a different one, but it twelve bucks to see that amount of star power. Like you kidding me? Yeah, sign me up, dude. It was That's like the college fun. baseball Oscars over there. <laughs> Honestly, did you did you did you chat with Hayden Shot? I didn't. Kept it mysterious because I want <laughs> the boy. full boy. introduction. Going to go to College Station here, and that's when the full introduction should be. You know, you got to keep mm-hmm. it right. Keep it a little bit mysterious. Keep some. And you're gonna you're gonna say, "Hey, Hayden, how about man? All this agriculture." Yeah. <laughs> how, how about that corn over there? That's. Gig that corn, you know, as they say here at agriculture schools. Yeah. Um, agricultural and mechanical, Steve, just so you're not yeah. tortured mechanical. all day long. Okay. Um, all right. It's okay. No, I, you're, you're, you would have gotten yeah. there. I, I I think if we were yeah. recording this at our normal afternoon time, you would have been yeah, right locked in. Locked yeah, in. That, that's when I figured <laughs> it out because all the machines. But when I was at the game, of course, walking around, I was asking the fans who they think the best player in college baseball is. And who do you guys think their answer was? Uh, Jack Caglione. Yeah, yeah. That was the resounding answer. But whenever <laughs> someone answered that, I wanted to ask them. I don't know how, like, everyone had heard about this guy there or something. It was like the Twilight Zone. But either way, I asked them if they had 10 at-bats and $10 million on the line, they could either get one hit off him or strike him out one time. And if they do it successfully, they get $10 million. But everybody is there. All the fans are there because it was a packed house. And that place is way different with people in it. It is insane. It was a very cool environment. 
What do you guys think? Which one would you guys take? Would you rather try to strike him out or try to get a hit off it? Well, I'll first say that, you know, I, if I could succeed, I could definitely afford some chicken tenders. So I'd be yeah. motivated at the very least <laughs> uh, to try I and make it happen. Play. Yeah. Jack, now, Caglione, yeah. Jack Caglione for me is a particularly bad matchup. Um, oh, terrible match. because mm-hmm. I am a Both sidearm. Sides. That's what I'm saying. I am a sidearm mm-hmm. right-handed pitcher against the <laughs> lefty power bat, and I'm a left-handed hitter against him. I am, <laughs> I am just screwed. Doomed. Like I have yeah. absolutely no chance. However, what happens if I walk? Mm, I was going to say there's a big difference here between re- respectfully. Is that a I know. Push? I know. Cags has been throwing more strikes this year. But if you think I'm trying to even bother swinging in the box, no chance. Uh, you're you're foolish. I, I'd be standing there. I'd probably be doing some sort of like jumping around, like waving, showing bunt, like trying yeah. to just distract as much as possible. That's how I'm reaching base. Um, but getting a hit is, I think I'm more likely to strike him out than get a hit. I, I like those odds. Like I, even I like if I'm throwing odds. nonsense. Steve, yeah. what about you? Yeah, I think I, I'm going strikeout, one strikeout. I think I still got still got a stronger bit case than us. Um, but I think another good option would be if he was throwing a bullpen to you and he was throwing ten fastballs, you catch all ten for a million dollars. I don't think I'm going with that option either, though. You know, I could do that. I could do that. Uh, I I mean, it's easier I'm, than the other I'm two ready. for sure. I'm ready. Yeah, for that. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm absolutely but, locked in for that. Um, I think even, he accidentally cut one. I, yeah. I died. Gone. <laughs> Spiking that is not a fun time for anybody. Uh, but that's a great question. Um, but I do want to, we should bounce around uh, the top 25. I know if, uh, I, again, A&M in Florida, they could give us the stuff to talk about all, all weekend long. But this top 25 situation we have uh, is about as chaotic of a top 25. I know it's early in the season. But boy, yeah. well, there's a lot. There's a lot to get to here. We're, we'll just hit a couple things. But Jake, did you want to take this to a to a different series? Well, no. I just wanted to talk briefly the top twenty five. Like, I really felt bad for Kendall Rogers this week because <laughs> don't like, say that often. This, this is chaos <laughs> in for a normal man, but for someone who vehemently hates so many different fan bases. That's another level of things you needed to consider when making the top 25. Yeah, that's a good point because you think about it week to week. If every team stays week to week, that's 25 teams that he can't say like, oh, yeah, no, I totally hate your team. But it's consistent. It's always the same teams that are safe. Now you got new teams. It, it it's a real mess, and I don't blame them. We of course had South Carolina, Texas, and Texas Tech, and NC State bounce out. Now all those fans have to go. Hey, you know what? Kendall just hates us, and they have to go on Twitter and go, "Oh, you just hate us. We hate you now too." Um, by yeah. the way, it, it's a two way street now in our sure. rankings of favorite college baseball media person. Not you, Kendall, right now. But maybe you'll mm. come back. Got him. Uh, so you want to let's just go through the like the top twenty five. Okay, so f- Texas A and M loses a series at Florida. Okay, uh, LSU loses a series to Mississippi State. Duke loses a series to Clemson. Tennessee loses a series to Alabama. All those teams were in the top ten, right? Wake Forest loses a series to Virginia. They were in the top ten. It was a a TCU loses a series to Oklahoma. It was a whole lot of attrition and losing this weekend for highly ranked teams. Um, NC State went 0 4 this week, just dropped, went from 13 and dropped out of the top 25. We had a lot of teams like in the back half of the top 25 beating teams in the top half of the top 25. And that is, I would imagine, very complicated when making the rankings because it's like, do we go off of these recent results or do we just like trust the sauce? Yeah. And I, and I don't know if we, we might've, uh, Oh, Steve, we, Oh, now it's just, now it's just us, Jake. Uh, I'm sure Steve will come back. Uh, All right. Our, okay. Our, so our, Blake, our... Blake Snell, <laughs> the San Francisco giants, two years 
62. Blake Snell again. Now, yeah. which of these teams needs Blake Snell the most? How about that? There's a good place to start. A lot um, of pitching, a lot of pitching struggles. We're going to talk about Wake Forest here in a second. When I'm not, I don't want to talk about Wake without Steve. That seems like not nice. Yeah, it seems like I would and I also say, want his perspective. But like we're, we're looking at the pitching right now. Tennessee could maybe probably pay him. You know, <laughs> they, could probably, the NIL. they could probably give him more than than you know with the Giants. The Giants. Did. I would yeah, say Boris I think they would, give him, Tony I, they would give him more than two years for sure. But I'm I'm just looking and, and to your point, like all these teams in the top 10, I don't really understand again, like because of the early like season mechanics and Aaron Fitt talks about this all the time, right? Like if they're close enough, we're compelled to jump Florida ahead of AM. Now I know you know they've been ahead of them at other times, but then you can't quite you don't want to quite move Duke. You know, I guess they they go below Clemson, but then are you going to move Tennessee below Alabama? Not quite. And so all of those different parts of the early season poll are very challenging. And then the other thing is, you know, joking about, okay, he hates our team. They hate our team, whatever. Okay, NC State gets swept. Fine. You get them out of there, right? Like Texas Tech goes three and two. There are a lot of losses at the bottom of this of these rankings. And yet, you know, South Carolina and Texas go out. You can imagine that they are are frustrated. But I don't know. I mean, and, and we have to get to Florida State here, which is the real the real stunner, yeah. but also makes all the sense in the world. Steve's back, by the way. So, Hi, Steve. Yeah. Uh, my take is that the top 25 doesn't really matter at all. And, like, mm -hmm. I think we le we as a – like, it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I like it because it is kind of a an easy, you know, reference point to understand how good certain teams are. When – if you're a casual <laughs> fan and you turn on the TV and there's just a, a number next to a team – that's helpful, right? Mm -hmm. But okay, like Virginia Tech's at 19 and North Carolina's at 20. Mm -hmm. Is Virginia Tech better than North Carolina? We have no idea. No <laughs> one knows. Those teams don't know, right? Like, so if you're a fan and you're pissed about where your team is in the rankings, like it does not make a freaking difference in the end. It has no actual impact, in my opinion. I I think this year, especially with how much how tumultuous it's been, first of all. The, the first problem is the teams in the top 25 just going to stop second, playing Steve. each other. That's the Steve, problem. It's pronounced, yeah. I believe it's pronounced tumultuous. I Dude, it's a SAT word. The fact that it even snuck out of my brain is an absolute miracle. I'm impressed. Today. No, it, you crushed it. Yeah, it, true, true it, could, it could be a T, and I could have to cartwheel for all I know. But either way, the teams just got to stop playing each other. Um, because Ooh, I feel yeah. like each week we have a team like Oklahoma and TCU where it's like, okay, well, Oklahoma swept TCU, so they're better than them. So we got to put them in front of them. And then that moves everyone back, and then everyone's like, oh, why my team moved back? We won this weekend. And it's like, well, yeah, but you didn't win as good as maybe other teams won. So it's not as exciting. But I, I feel like this year at the top, it really needs to say, like, look, this is the top 25, maybe. Like maybe top twenty five. <laughs> Sounds like maybe is in the title is our, so funny. We're we're really trying our best to guess here, uh, <laughs> but that that's really how it is. And then you get schools like Florida State, where it's like, okay, well, in the past, let's be honest, they weren't phenomenal last year. Um, Florida State fans, I think you guys know that. I think you guys spent a whole summer talking about how you would like that not to happen again this year. And it's not happening again this year, but, you know, it, it takes a while to prove that. Sometimes it takes five weeks and 18 wins and zero losses, <laughs> and you guys prove that. And you make the biggest jump in the history of D1 baseball, which has been around since the history of time, which right. I, I don't know if you guys remember that. And well, actually yeah. in National Treasure, when Nicolas Cage is dusting off the Declaration of Independence in the bottom, Thomas Jefferson and his friends wrote, you know, college baseball is rad. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. And that's when D1 baseball started. That was the first top 25. Um, <laughs> Which is a long time ago. Was, yeah. And, and I don't know. Again, I know some of your historical references there might be a little a little goofy. But um, that was my first reaction when I opened the rankings yesterday was there is no way anyone has jumped onto the top 25 this high. So, I don't know if they if that is actually indeed the case, but I can't imagine any other situation where someone would vault all the way to twelve. And I know um, Aaron said in the chat yesterday he was like, "Yeah, honestly, this is probably even a little over aggressive." 
Um, but it also speaks to just all the kind of losses that we saw yesterday. It's like, all right, screw it. They look great. They have star power. It's not like we've never heard of Florida State. It's just they have that terrible season. It, it, bumping them all the way up to 12 feels a little nuts after not having them on there, but I also understand it. But, like, again, the fact that we have now already gone from Florida State above Wake in five weeks and two weeks of ACC play speaks to how you know wild this beginning of the season has gone. Uh, should we talk about Wake Forest? I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. It's, what? What's? Uh, yeah. What's going on there, Steve? What's Wake this? Forest. Now I remember last week when they dropped to seven. I was like, "Whoa, is, is that an overcorrection?" You know. Nope. Um, and now it's like we are we are falling fast, and it's very simple. Um, if your name isn't Chase Burns, you're not getting enough outs right now. And uh, their offense has been pretty awesome. Nick Kurtz is slowly heating up, which is nice. But they lost so many good players on both sides of the ball. And it just seems like they're trying to figure out, like, what, what's their what's their thing? What is – I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, their I'm thing little... was supposed to be pitching Hartle yeah. Burns Massey. Yeah. Was tickling Steve's giblets, understandably. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but they are simply not getting outs. Steve, do you know anybody over there who could maybe help with that? that way? Yeah, I, I got a friend, um, Corey Muscara. One of their catchers is also one of my friends. Um, Ooh, so you have this. It's, uh, so it's your fault. I think, yeah, it's all my fault, as everybody knows. But I think so this weekend, both Nick Kurtz left. Uh, I believe he left on Sunday. He yeah. didn't play that game. He got hurt. Um, he got and Michael hurts. Massey, both down. Yeah. So we got Nick Hurts back. Um, and a lot of people will be like, I think a lot of people are going to be like, OK, well, this is why Wake Forest is not going well for him. But I think having Cole Rowland down in the bullpen is yes. what really hurt him just out because. From the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just having having a question mark at the back end of ball games is really kind of hurting them, and you know it's making it to where it's like, okay, well, how do we even get to the back end to where we and, get a guy getting meaningful outs? And I think what's so disappointing is that okay, we were pretty optimistic about the offense, but mostly because they have you know two potential top ten picks in Kurtz and Seaver King, but to have Adam Tellier the Ball State transfer, be unreal. To have Jack Winne, who we highlighted a few weeks ago, be unbelievable. To have Jake Reinish, right? Like some of these other guys, not necessarily as famous, to be tearing it up and for it to not be necessarily translating to wins because the rest of the pitching has been so, you know, lackluster is frustrating. Now the talent's still here. We're not panicking just yet. But what's very clear is like there's – I mean, it's not like the ACC is going to wait around, you know, for Wake to figure their stuff out. Like, that that's not really how it's going to work. So, uh, I don't want to panic too much, but, the, you know, there's enough reason for – like, who? okay, so who do they – so they have Louisville at home this weekend. I mean, respectfully to the, to the Cardinals, right? Like, that should be – we, we got to be taking care of business there. If I'm it's waiting. a get-right series. It's a get-right yeah. series. As someone who drafted Louisville – uh, in the <laughs> wind draft. Yeah. All right. I'm wearing it. I'm wearing that. Yep. It's okay. Louisville, <laughs> Louisville, by the way, next two weekends, Jake, in case you think it's going to get any better, at Wake, at Florida State. So, hey, look, let me tell you something. <laughs> I got Wake, though. I also have Wake for us. So, you do have good Wake. pick. You're good all pick in it. Yeah. Me. For you, it's going to happen. I know all about college Tennessee. baseball, boys. I know all about hey, college baseball. Can't get, can't, can't not get a win. You know, can't get that's flat. true. You'll you'll at least get some. Um, Steve, uh, anything, any final thoughts on the top twenty-five before we tickle your giblets? Um, I think Mississippi State. Um, yeah. congrats. You know, we're talking mm -hmm. Wake Forest. What are you doing? Also, Mississippi State. What are you guys doing here? That's cool. Seven hundred and forty-ish or so days, based on a rough kind of drunken Google estimate. And oh boy, I, I'm going with that. I'm sticking with it. Um, but they're back, so congrats to them. I know it was since uh, weekend four of the 2022 season was the last time they were even in the top 25 discussion. Uh, the fans endured some pain, some trauma, um, some tribulations. Another big T word for you, Jake, to start your Monday morning. And yeah, and they're back. 
So it, it's great. I'm very happy for him. Very, very pleased. I know those fans deserve it. They have put in the time and put in the effort. So welcome back, Mississippi State. Hey, man, the dude was uh, was bumping. Um, and yeah, I mean, they are just like, that was the first series at Mississippi State uh, that I've watched over the last couple of years where I was like, this is what it's supposed to look like, you know? And it was kind of sloppy at times for both sides. And I know, you know, it's still a help series, but beating, it's not like LSU played like crap, you know? Like they they had some moments there and their pitching wasn't that. I know they gave up a lot of runs, but like their pitching had been so good until this weekend. So I agree. I, I like having Mississippi State back as like a main character in the in the college baseball universe. That is very nice. We'll see how good they actually are. Yeah, baseball's a hard game to win. They did it. Now, speaking of people who won baseball games, I want to get into who tickled my giblets. And this one's weird because it's the Virginia Tech Hokies as a baseball team. Whoa! They tickled, they tickled the giblets. They've been playing very good college baseball. They swept the Notre Dame Fighting Irish this weekend. They're 14-4 and four on the season. Or they took two out of three, I believe. And they're 14-4 and four on the season, but they have my attention. They've been playing really good baseball, and they're starting off ACC play really strong. So, I, I'm I'm looking forward to watching more of them. They're five and one to start the ACC season, and I think that win column is just going to continue to grow. Uh, so they swept they swept Notre Dame, and they just took two or three at Louisville. Um, okay. So, that's, but I'll, but so again, and and that's but this is the kind of thing too, where for them it's like. Find the momentum against maybe not the strongest teams. Who do they have next? Let's see. Virginia Tech. Boston College. Okay, Boston College again. So Boston College, then Pitt, and then we get to Wake, Georgia Tech, Duke, UNC. So we'll see. I agree. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i talk about um, Carson Martini a little bit more later. But, yeah, I mean, you, you got to – hurts to say. I mean, by the way – for you to say that in a, in a weekend that that UV we, we're talking about Wake, but like UVA Steve, I mean, they play great, yep. they, they did really it. good baseball, you know, so I'm, I'm just not, you phenomenal know stuff. Never a doubt, really. No, honestly, certainly, certainly not. I I don't have it in the moments. We'll talk about some other moments from that series, but uh, how about a down, you know, o two count, two outs, bottom of the ninth, down a run, game tying home run, next pitch. We love this. That's sick. We love this. I, That's in fact what college baseball uh, is all about. It's all about. Yeah, it really is. And before the at bat or before the home run hit, Coach Mack, our third base coach, would always do this thing when a pitcher's in a groove, he'll take time, you know, and try to get them out of the groove. He did that, and I was like, I watched, nothing's going to change. <laughs> Next pitch, a home run. I'm like, yeah, that's why we do that. Hell yeah, Coach Mack. He knows what he's doing. Smart guy. There hey, you go. Textbook, just a just a textbook. I was a shitty fan. Um, real quick. <laughs> uh, Steve, I don't know. Um, I don't know what bat uh, UVA was swinging this weekend, but you wanna you wanna bring us to our ad read? Yeah, I mean, if I were them, the bat I would be swinging is the. Have you heard of the 2025 Soldier Tank BB Core Baseball Bat by Soldier Sports? This isn't just any bat. It's lighter and hotter than any of its predecessors, thanks to infused power alloy technology that creates an ultra big, ultra hot sweet spot. Crafted from over 2.5 years of research and development, the Soldier Tank is the perfect blend of speed and power. Designed for both power and contact hitters, it features a formula for success. Speed times mass times impact equals extreme power. I've seen it swung. Even the miss hits have juice with the soldier tank. The bat is priced at an incredible $311, which is well worth it to swing the top scoring BB core bat ever. I actually swung one. I paid $300 for it. Didn't feel like it was paid enough. You know, they are selling fast though. So head over to soldiersports.us to secure yours today. Thanks, Soldier Sports. Thank you to Soldier Sports for sponsoring the Shock Factor podcast, Steve. We move to our moments of the week. Where shall we begin? Uh, I believe we shall start off at Ole Miss with Duke transfer Andrew Fisher. <laughs> absolutely mashing home runs this weekend in a series against South Carolina where Ole Miss performed super well. 
He had three bombs in one game. That's two bombs in one game. That's a lot of bombs in one game. Three bombs in one game. It's just, what are you doing? And his numbers three. Love when people do stuff like that. Oh, it matches up. Not, you know, that not, rubs my brain. Not quite that. Remember that guy on, uh, is he still on Liberty? Whose name is literally three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> three I, yeah. I hadn't, I, I believe I struck out three Hillier. And I remember thinking when they announced three was coming to the plate and his number was three, I was like, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that's three. Sit what... down. Yeah, he's still there. <laughs> he's still there. Three uh, Andrew, Andrew Fisher. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's not a bad not a bad setup for him, hitting three home runs in one game. I will say yeah, it's a little – it's strange for him, like – leaving Duke like in you know in most college baseball seasons it's like yeah you know you leave Duke to go to Ole Miss I I get it this year uh, <laughs> it's a little weird it's like okay I mean, I mean listen he's going to be a high draft pick next year good for him but it is kind of a funny look but good for him yeah it's like oh but if you go who else is gonna hit home runs oh everybody um, but hey, you know what? That that's just the state of the world. But staying in the state of Mississippi, another really cool Mississippi baseball player who did stuff. It's Mississippi State's Cam Schalke, who, of course, weird arm slot guy that rules. He I tweeted a highlight of him throwing a pitch that kind of goes up. A lot of people don't even realize it's one of those riser pitches. It's a weird pitch. Because he makes one of the sickest PFP plays that every pitcher watches and goes, yeah, no, I would have done it the exact same way. It is the absolute bar in terms of like Jeter was to shortstops making a throw from the backhand side. This is what pitchers want to do. This is what they are aiming for. No one can probably this, do it other than him, but it was awesome. This was This play happened like... 30 seconds after I turned the game on and I was like, this is the greatest baseball game I've ever seen. I, and I yeah, know, it was already, but like I, it was, I think my favorite part about this, and we've obviously talked about some PFPs a, a lot on the show already when he slides, picks up, throws it. And then if you pause it at release, he's somehow just like standing up straight. <laughs> like it's like he slides yeah. and then stands up and then just throws a per it's just it is so he makes it it's one of those things where he makes it look so easy that you that you forget for a half second how impossible that play is let alone in the spots that it was in and also with the fact that like he's spinning while making the throw you can't see any layback in his arm so it kind of looks yeah. like the ball just appears like it just kind of teleports just, out it is exquisite it's like there's a spring that just goes boing. Yeah. And then yeah, by the way, we're just I, missing the sound. I also love about this, um, which is when the umpire, the umpire's out call matches the enthusiasm kind of of the play. You know, like he good for the first base up here because you're not just going to be like a kind of just like a very standard, he's out, right? Like he's, he is out. Like you got him. And I love that. So that's how I, if I was an ump and I was softly like that, I'd be getting pretty hyped too. Yeah. I love when the umpires are just humans. They admit it. They, they play into the moment. Now, of course, this was one of the cooler slides. Jordan, do you have anything else? No, on no, keep, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to go along with the trend of slides. We have Seaver King in center field for Wake Forest, making a really cool slide against my friends at Virginia. But, of course, Wake Forest tweeted, all flights to the king have been grounded. And all I could think is, does this mean Wake Forest baseball knows where Cape Middleton is? <laughs> Do they know what's going on with that? Because I see on Twitter, it's like, hey, where is she? And then I'm, I Google, and it's like, hey, if I'm missing, I will, first thing, this is a promise to you guys. I'll go on Twitter and be like, here's a video of me not missing. Unless, like, you know, there's some scam and people are like, hey, that guy's missing. Let's go find his Spotify stream, his songs, like a Michael Jackson situation. Now his music goes way up and super famous. Maybe we do that. But typically, I'm going to do the video, just be like, hey, look, no need to worry. No need for the concern. Here we are. 
<laughs> why why wouldn't they do that? You know, very sketchy. Does what yeah, how far how Wake far Forest into a college go? how how far into a college baseball weekend do we have to worry about Steve if he hasn't tweeted? That's that's I guess the question. Mm. <laughs> that that's, we're that's a real concern. Probably something Jake me. and I should be thinking about, to be honest. But. I haven't heard from Steve. <laughs> Is he okay? Yeah, you just check. It's like but I, I will give people let me let me ah. give people some let me well, that's the thing. Let me give people some background though. Is oftentimes Steve will tweet, and I don't blame him because this is why he's good at what he does. Steve will send 50 tweets before he responds to our, our text. This <laughs> is just like it's like I need him to answer a simple question, and I can see him tweeting, and I know sometimes it's your wife. I can see at Big Donkey 47, you know, pumping out the content. I'm like, okay, I know Steve's alive. I'd like for him to respond to my text. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's the one track mind. It's like uh, if I if I close the Twitter app, we never know when it's going to be opened again. And yes. that, that's that's a risk I got to be careful of on the weekend, you know? Uh, Steve, we have to talk about the green beer. Um, what what am what am I looking at here? Yeah. So, of course, we get St. Patrick's Day over the weekend and Arkansas had green beer on tap, which of all the liquids to consume in an off color than the usual color they are i think beer is one i'm low on the totem pole for i don't <laughs> think like beer is a object that goes into my body and i have an understanding that there is like a 75 percent chance i'm not this isn't the last time the liquid's going to be seen by me in this state like i'm going to see it again i'll probably throw it up something's going to happen i'm going to go nuts because, you know, why not go nuts? Because typically if I'm drinking, it's a fun situation like somewhere like Omaha or a college baseball game. This situation, we got a lot of green beer at a college baseball game. I don't know the price structure of it, but I know the SEC is typically pretty decent on beer. I, I think it's one of the better, better places to go buy a beer in terms of economics. And this would just be a disgusting canvas for me. Um, <laughs> not good. Uh, you know, Steve, part of the reason that the Pac-12 um, is falling apart is because they've gone woke. Instead of green beer, it's kale smoothies out there, right? Mm. Meanwhile, the real Americans down in Arkansas are serving this very natural um patriotic bud light uh neon green uh you know i i find it difficult for me as a non-irish person to adjudicate this i however do think it is stupid yeah i feel like it's really a reflection of where arkansas is at um where they're they like, can do anything they want we're number one, baby. You know, we got Mizzou in town, respectfully. We're going to handle the Tigers, you know, quick work. Let's drink green beer. Like, if they were struggling, if their ERA was over seven instead of under two or whatever, I don't know if it would feel as festive, right? I don't I know it's St. Patrick's Day. It's St. Patrick's Day. Oh, you're going to do green beer anyway. But I feel like it's not a coincidence that Arkansas was the team that was like, yeah, we're drinking yeah, you green can't beer this do, weekend. You can't do green beer if you're like winless right yeah 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 because then the replies on twitter are just your fans like is this really what we're focused on <laughs> and it's like yeah we are because uh we're still a marketing team we don't just That's take true. our jobs off they don't care what the record is. In, the, in the stinker right now i think just the problem with this is i grew up in a culture and in a society where you know, naturally occurring liquids that are green are Mountain Dew and that's it, you know, nothing else. So it, it's just seeing that green beer really throws me off in the fact that it's not a deal. Uh, totally fair. I mean, I, I just had a lime Haritos like yesterday and that was the same color, less, um, it, I, but it tasted. So here's the other thing. It tasted green. Yeah. You know, like it, I don't know what it is. Sense. A green Bud Light, I would be, it would be kind of disconcerting, you know, what I would be drinking. But anyway, okay, enough about green beer. Steve, I, I want to jump ahead to this, these rice shirts. Yeah. Um, I don't, what am I looking at here? I'm, I, 
please. Okay, so uh, of course, in college baseball and sports in general, anytime you got a group of guys, there's terms that get reset, re retold again. Words are invented. You know, you get people of a similar background together, similar experience. You know, I, I think that's actually how language was formed initially. But one of those sayings is something called FURTA. And it's like, oh, FURTA boys. Like, oh, coach isn't going to schedule a practice at 2 a.m. or at 6 a.m. after a Friday night because we just had, you know, a big win. We want to go and get drunk. Obviously, you have games on Saturday, right, so okay. that won't work. But we're talking fall. So it's FURTA boys. Coaches, FURTA boys. But Rice does a great job using their R logo right in the middle of the word. And it, it's a phenomenal shirt. Jordan, have you never heard of Ferda? I haven't. Jordan's never heard of Ferda. No, I haven't. I, I, I mean, I, and I, I, it's just a very funny way for it to be introduced to me. Um, but it is a great, uh, I mean, I guess this is, this photo is probably like the warm up, right? Pre game. You're not seeing this, Jordan. I guess, I guess the real move, if you're really buying into this, right, is to like have a couple. I know not many college baseball teams have, you know, the actual buttons, but if they did a couple buttons down, you kind of have the fur to peeking out, you know, that seems like mm. that's probably the move. What about fertilizer? Nice. Uh, again, I, is that, I, I was going to guess I mean, that's what it maybe stood for. You know, when I think of fertilizer, I think of, man, how about that agriculture? <laughs> um, man, how that, about that agriculture? At the man agriculture schools. Well, speaking of schools that are different, schools that have special things about them, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the UCF Knights, who, of course, from oh time to time are the UCF Citronauts, which is a play. That is that is two different history things mixed into one, I believe, which is really cool, where it's their old mascot was this orange astronaut because, of course, Florida orange groves and space and the kennedy space station but during the ucf game we had a rocket ship an actual rocket ship crazy. full size rocket ship going to i don't know the destination i'm assuming a celestial body of some kind or a space station i don't know i i'm just sitting here thinking about how small a space station is compared to this rocket ship because you know of course it's far away but it's way smaller than the scoreboard so how are you going to know where to park that how are you going to find that thing considering it's probably the size of a grain of rice if you aren't <laughs> close to it and it's just kind of orbiting sure but either way we have we have ucf just pumping oklahoma state 12 to 2 while this is happening so if i'm on oklahoma <laughs> state i'm like you know what how is the game locked in at all how's the, how the game let me say Space. let me say <laughs> great moments in espn plus history this yeah. alone is worth adding ucf to the big 12 <laughs> They're in. I mean, They're remember, in. this is this is Big 12 baseball. And if you're Big 12, you're the Big 12 commissioner. Yeah. You're like, oh, my God, we got rocket so, launches during our games? This is hell unreal. yeah, Doc. <laughs> and Houston, you know. Houston, we yeah, don't, don't know. Houston, uh, we that's, have rockets. That's, I, yeah. I got to say, like, you know, UCF has, like, the space uniforms that they yeah. wear, like the Citronaut uniforms. And I think it was easy to be like, okay, like, congrats, I guess. But now that they have literally launched a rocket during the game nearby, great, all in. <laughs> um, I have to say, maybe distracting to the hitter. I think we need to coordinate these rocket launches better or have it, like, behind Agreed. the batter's eye. Or It's just mm -hmm. it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. Yep. It's it's just so cool. I mean, can you think about how hard Teddy Roosevelt's brain would explode if he went, <laughs> hey, by the way, we're going to, on this thing called the television, mm -hmm. the, the talkie box, we're going to show a <laughs> rocket ship going during, oh, you, well, a rocket launch. Surely that'll be like national news. That'll, that'll, uh, that'll be on no, TV it's, it's, nationwide. It's it's Big 12 background noise. Yeah, ESPN Plus. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Satellite. We aren't even getting the big guns in here. The cameraman does a phenomenal job. It's a great clip. It's a great clip. Um, 
Anyway, uh, Steve, it's let's just, yeah. You look at it and you're like, man, that thing looks absolutely torched. And I'm I'm just looking at it and like thinking of how far in these ESPN cameras can zoom, <laughs> how close it gets to the flame. And all I can think is, man, that flame, this night, this evening, that smoke. Baseball barbecue started when a broken grill fork and a cracked back came together to make the perfect grill tool. And use that fire from a spaceship to grill things. Now baseball barbecue makes patented bat handle barbecue tools and cutting boards that are licensed for the best teams in college baseball. Fun and functional baseball barbecue products are the perfect gift for casual fans and serious grillers alike and a great way to out tailgate your ride. Visit baseballbarbecue.com slash D1 baseball to find the perfect grilling gift for the college baseball fan in your life and UCF. Very cool rocket launch. Great stuff. Uh, another Good brilliant job, transition from Steve. All right, Steve, we got to get moving here. So let's do our players and pitchers of the week. And then let's say goodbye, Steve, your player of the week. Player of the week. I always talk about it and how I want when guys transfer for them to get to play their old school and have a really big moment. That happened from my good friend Tate Ballestero, who I played with him at UVA. He didn't get a ton of playing time, transferred to St. John's, got a ton of playing time, played really well, transferred to Wake Forest this weekend. He hit a game tying home run late in the game, or I believe it was a go ahead home run. I tweeted game tying home run. I was wrong. And <laughs> It, it was it was a two run home run, yeah. If I had uh, if I had what's it called a uh, self awareness maybe, but no. So that's all right. Tate big home run at UVA in not in UVA uniform. Very cool moment. So that is going to get you my player of the week. Very simple man over here. Jake, who you got player of the week? Jacob Ference, man. D three baseball icon, going from Salisbury University to the university of what does this say virginia yeah Bedron. you look like Jacob, you got something to say. We, we saw jacob ference hit a home run with our in person um yeah. in 2021 that can't be yes right. 2022 it is right 2021 oh my gosh. Like it first game. okay so one of the first games college baseball maybe the first college baseball game we attended in the 2021 like COVID season, right? First back from COVID was at Rand at Randolph Macon in Virginia. Against Salisbury. Uh, against Salisbury and Jacob Ferentz, big boy catcher. We were like, uh, that catcher's it. got big legs. We're like, man, that guy <laughs> looks I mean, I know Salisbury, they're a D three powerhouse. We're like, he looks like a D one player. Little did we know. Now he's he's tearing it up. By the way, Ben Watson has been unreal for Virginia Tech. Another D three guy. Like these guys are, are killing it. But Jacob Ferentz, yeah. sorry, yeah, I mean, he six for eleven over the weekend with three homers and two doubles. Mm -hmm. That'll work against Wake Forest. Like th that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, look, look, I take that back. He did not play the Saturday game. I got my stats mixed up. He went five for eight mm -hmm. with three home runs and two doubles. And didn't have to face Chase Burns. Dub. Now that's a good weekend, baby. <laughs> um, my player of the week is Carson Demartini. Uh, five homers. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm shouting out Fat Actor, Fat Actor here on on Streamyard, but I wanted to give it a shout out to Carson Demartini. Just a guy who I have just been a huge fan of since he was a freshman. And last year the power was kind of down. He was walking a lot. This year. He has already matched his home run total from last season, and we are not even in April yet. I believe he, yeah, he had 15 as a freshman, 10 as a sophomore, and now he's already up to 12 as a junior. He is just on fire. So, um, and what a what a baseball name Carson Demartini is. So, not surprised that he is uh, good at the sport. Uh, let's do wrap around. I'm going to do my pitcher now. I'm going with AJ Wilson. So I am giving uh, the Charlotte uh, program some love. This guy, oh, it looks like I sniped him from. That was crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I, again, I know you don't look what? at what I tweet, Jake, but I did tweet about AJ Wilson uh, three days ago. So <laughs> I don't um, care about your tweets, big dog. I'm sorry. That's fine. That's fine. See, if people wonder, like, do you guys ever run your tweets by each other? Clearly not. Jake didn't even I, know, tweet about well, AJ Wilson three uh, days ago. Um, but sorry, go ahead, Steve. I, I just think that's a, you know, no ego sort of thing. Just like, totally. a, you know, I said it, it, it is me. 
it's me. It, I don't care yeah, about the me. results. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, so I, I sniped AJ Wilson uh, from Jake, but I have the receipts to prove it. He's a 23 year old left hander with, uh, I think he is now up to, he's a reliever. He's up to 46 strikeouts in 22 innings, which is a completely laughable K rate. He started his career at ECU. He's been at Charlotte the last couple of years. And he basically starts, you watch the highlights of him. I've seen some really this before, but he's basically starting backwards. Like his right foot is facing second base. And he is just not a fun at bat for left. Another would be a really bad matchup for you, Jake. But uh, this guy has my attention, and he smells like someone that's going to get $150,000 in the sixth round. So AJ Wilson, keep, uh, keep on dominating. It's a good scent. So I want to kind of take this moment to shout out all pitchers. Okay. Oh, wow. The, wow. Yeah. The pitcher of the week is everybody. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> International Pitchers Day. Pitchers, let me just say, we see you. We hear you. And we stand with you. Okay. Because it is a tough time to be a pitcher in college baseball. The ball is flying. It is, we have reached, uh, a, a Jordan and I were early on this. We knew, we said to you folks last year, this is getting silly and yeah. it is very silly now. And I just want to say shouts out to all the pitchers out there who Keep gave trying. up dinky, Keep pitching. dinky home runs. Okay. Like bloop home runs. We feel you. We see you and we stand with you, Steve. <laughs> The bloopers are just, they're gone. You know, all all the people, all the knuckleheads out there who love bloopers are gone. But the knuckleheads who love home runs, those those are still in. Now, a a guy who obviously doesn't love home runs is probably my pitcher of the week, Bryce Blevins from Marshall, who in nine innings only gave up two hits, one run, struck out four guys, only four strikeouts, but only two walks. And he did all this in just 90 pitches, which you guys know me. You guys remember last year, I love pitchers from West Virginia who just refused to get taken out of ball games. And mm-hmm. this is another one where Bryce Blevins, he's in Marshall. He's like, you know, we got a cool new stadium. I want to stay in it as long as I can. I Shouts out to Blaine Traxel, who I have not thought about since we recorded last year. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're 90 pitches, complete game is absurd. And that's why you only is, you know, four strikeouts. So I love that call, Steve. And uh, yeah, Marshall, good good for uh, good for them. He is Marshall, by the way. Um, let's uh, let's wrap up. Let's wrap up, guys. Uh, I didn't even have time to update our records in the team's draft. But all you have to know is that Steve is still absolutely dominating because he has Florida State and because he has Oregon State and because he has Virginia and because he has Coastal. And anyway, so I'll update the records next week. But Steve's obviously still kicking our ass. So we can end the podcast there. Steve, this was a great show. I especially for job, everybody. You know, before 8 a.m., like, I, I think we crushed it. So thank you, Steve. Uh, final word from Mr. Big Donkey 47. This one felt good. And, you know, it, it was quick. It was easy. It was, it was a jolt of energy to start the morning. And for that, I thank you guys. Thank you, of course, to our sponsors. Thank you, of course, to D1 Baseball for allowing me to get together with you guys and talk about college baseball on a weekly basis. And thank you to Soldier Sports for – the home runs that I get to see on a weekly basis, even the miss hits are good. Minute out. to minute, on a minute to minute basis. Uh, every every minute, I'm like, Whoa, look at that miss hit. That miss hit had juice. Speaking of juice, wow, my cutting board's covered in it. Thank you, baseball barbecue. Um, and that's just because I'm pouring orange juice on my cutting board. Um, I'm not cutting meats. I'm just lugeing it. Uh, it's, it's like it's like my straw, you know. But thank you so much for tuning into the Shock Factor podcast. We appreciate you doing it. And we'll talk to you more about college baseball the rest of this week. Goodbye.